Let me just say this. That man is the greatest of all time. About to enter the octagon for the 21st time. Let's let him walk in. Let's take in the atmosphere. Joe, the beautiful thing about Anderson Silva coming to fight Daniel Cormier on 48 hours notice is Anderson Silva is fighting tonight. And when everything settles down in, in the history of this sport is told, we will know one thing. There has never been anyone like that man right there. Well, he certainly, as of right now, is the greatest fighter of all time. In my mind, at least, and in many other people's as well. At one time, the best fighter living pound for pound on earth. He has had ups and downs since then. What I like about him coming into this fight, first of all, that he was very confident, very relaxed taking it. He likes the fact that he doesn't have to, tuck, to cut weight. And he also likes the fact that taking this fight on short notice like this, he didn't have, didn't have to do any media, no, no obligations. He was very relaxed, didn't have any pressure coming on him in this fight and he believes that stylistically he matches up very well with daniel cormier and at light heavyweight he has been spectacular in the three fights that we've seen him compete in that division three and oh defeating james Irvin in a minute and one second and both of the men who helped to really put us on the map forrest griffin three minutes 23 seconds stephen bonner four minutes and 40 seconds and joe crazy bob cook daniel cormier's trainer said to me yesterday Anderson is faster, but without the training camp in the media, he said Anderson is going to be fresh. He said he felt that Cormier was faster than John Jones, but now Daniel Cormier faces a man in Anderson Silva, who Bob Cook said is faster than the light heavyweight champion. Anderson! The Spider Silva, the greatest champion in UFC history. How about the week this two-time Olympian has had? He was about to face off with his enemy, his arch enemy, his most bitter rival for the undisputed light heavyweight championship. Then Dana White told him that John Jones was out. And he said immediately, no, no, Dana, I've worked so hard. I worked so hard. He wanted to fight. He was willing to fight Anderson Silva. He's here because this man is a true competitor. It's a pretty crazy turn of events. I mean, obviously, Daniel went through a gigantic camp and, and prepared with pain and really wanted to fight. Feels like he's at his best right now. He wants to compete. But what a difference in the opponents to go from John Jones to Anderson Silva on short notice like that. I mean, it's, uh, it's very rare that a guy finds himself in that sort of a situation as a professional fighter. Two days notice, complete change of opponent, and now he's fighting one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time. Crazy Bob Cook told me that the weight cut Joe got emotional, and, and, and what I mean is that because the emotions were up and down, 
you know, what was a great game plan that was going perfectly started to go haywire a little bit. And so the cut was tougher. And DC had to overcome the roller coaster ride and now wants to peak against Anderson Silva. If anybody can do it, it's this man. Well, he is an outstanding wrestler and has competed successfully at heavyweight, winning the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. He's just a, an outstanding competitor. An excellent, excellent grappler, very good striker. And again, we really can't emphasize this enough. He, in going through his full camp with Kane Velasquez, we saw what phenomenal shape Kane is in. That is one of the secret weapons of Daniel Cormier's success, or I should say not so secret weapon. <laughs> Cormier, one of 14 Olympic competitors to grace the octagon, and he is the UFC light heavyweight champion of the world. Take for this light heavyweight fight. Daniel Cormier, 37 years old. Anderson Silva, four years his elder. Much taller and a significant reach advantage. Look at Anderson, no cut at all. 198.5 once again, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist, holding professional record, 33 wins, 7 losses, 1 no contest. He stands 6 feet 2 inches tall, weighing in at 198 and 1 half pounds. Fighting out of Curitiba, Brazil, presenting the former UFC middleweight champion, Anderson the Spider. And now if you see his opponent fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record, 17 wins, one loss. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 206 pounds. Fighting out of San Jose, California, presenting the former Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix Champion and the undisputed UFC Light Heavyweight Champion, Daniel DC. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, John McCarthy. Big John McCarthy, our referee. Daniel Cormier. Anderson Silva. Here we go! Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Bud Light, Raise One. So right now, the Southpaw out of Curitiba, Brazil, the Spider. He's in the yellow trunks, the Brazilian colors, DC in the dark trunks. Now, conventional wisdom would say that a guy like Anderson taking a fight like this on two days' notice is not in the kind of shape he's going to need to be to grind it out with Daniel Cormier for five rounds. If that is the case, he may look to try to close the show early. Absolutely. And DC, Joe, knows that. He's going to try to get inside on Anderson early and embrace the grind. There it is. And he's got it. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Anderson Silva does not want to carry Daniel Cormier's weight. He definitely does not. Daniel is thick, thick and powerful, and has tremendous posture. And it's incredibly difficult to control him on the ground, especially when he's on top of you and fresh like this. Anderson trying to set up the right arm bar. Throwing those legs up. Eating some punches here on the ground with DC. Anderson, 3-0 at 205. I should correct myself. This is a three-round fight, not a five-round fight. Even so, two Still days notice, like this, yeah. three rounds. 
incredibly difficult for Anderson. Bruce Anderson was supposed to fight in his hometown of Curitiba, Brazil, back in May. Right before he's going to get on a plane, ended up having his gallbladder removed. He's getting stacked here by Daniel, and big punches are going to come. And Daniel can control his position here and get that right arm free. Anderson holding on to that right arm. Silva's got a great ground game. He's got an excellent guard. It's going to be tested right here. He's, again. he's util utilizing it very well defensively here. And now, Ander now uh, DC has moved to half guard. He's getting some good. Solid ground and pound off here. Getting those elbows to land. And again. Midway point of round number one. DC on top, half guard. DC wants to stay busy here. He would rather not get stood up. Well, Anderson's doing a good job of using, utilizing the lockdown on the right leg. See how he's elevating Daniel? It keeps Daniel from being able to put any real power into those shots. He's taking that leg out of play and taking that side. Anderson won the belt in his second UFC fight. His reign as champion was nearly seven years long. Good ground and pound here by DC. Anderson trying to avoid too much damage here early. All DC so far. Cormier's first 13 fights were at heavyweight. His record was 13 and 0 in those fights. John McCarthy telling Cormier, keep it going, move, keep the action going. Don't forget, following our pay-per-view, flip over to FS1 for the UFC 200 post-fight show. For our fans in Canada, flip over to TSN. Anderson has done a pretty good job defensively up yeah. to this point. And Daniel has gotten some shots in, but a lot of them have been partially blocked. And Anderson has done a good job of controlling his posture. Cormier's big... got his hand over his mouth now, control the breathing. Yes, and the big key to this position is really his utilization of the lockdown. But Daniel's gotten some posture here. He's up, he's gotten some space. We've seen so many magnificent striking displays from these great Brazilians. But every single one of them, Joe, can fight on the ground. They all bring to the octagon that black belt in jiu-jitsu. Jin is crushing him here, just sort of pressuring him, making him carry his weight. But nothing particularly damaging so far in this first round. Except perhaps the cardio of Anderson Silva. Corner cam brought to you by Hudson Shipping, transporting innovation. Use your knees when he's coming in. You can't try to exchange hands with him. Don't let him get too close. Move a little bit more. Silva 5-0 and oh in three round fights inside the octagon. Round two. Oh my. He goes high with the head kick. Oh, good right hand by DC. Expect to see Anderson try to put on a show here. But not a show to be showy, but a show to finish the fight. DC smiling on him here. Anderson can come from anywhere. 
DC throws him down to the canvas and takes side control. Beautiful grappling by DC. He's gonna trap him here. He's looking to step over, but he got caught in half guard on the way. Cormier has owned this fight. All about top position. Joey, you pointed out Anderson not taking a ton of damage, but he's unable to do anything offensively. And he's carrying Daniel's weight. Yep. It's exhausting. And DC's looking to try to pass. Anderson's just holding on to him here. DC's got to get that right leg free. Every time Anderson elevates that leg, it throws DC's balance off, but Daniel's done a great job of maintaining top position. But Anderson, you know, every time he does that, you see that lockdown has been very effective here. And even though DC's still kind of beating him up, there's nothing particularly devastating going on. Styles make fights. And this style that Daniel Cormier utilizes. Anderson's got his, Anderson, if he keeps going along that way, and that's why Daniel just dropped those hammer fists on him, he has that underhook on that right side, and he was trying to keep sneaking around the side, and then Daniel became much more active when he realized he was in a bad position. Here it is again. If he can get that right leg free, it's a good position, but if he can't get that leg free, Anderson can keep sneaking around towards his left side. Now, Daniel's concentrating on the Kimura. The style that Cormier utilizes is bad for Anderson Silva, especially on short notice. Yeah, and with Anderson getting this lockdown, there's two options. He can try to sneak around towards the left and sneak around towards the right. But the problem is Daniel's just a bigger, stronger, better grappler. And every time he goes to make a move, Daniel corrects and winds up on top. And he just is a mountain on you. You just can't shake him. And these are some hard, short elbows. And Anderson's trying to move, trying to go to the deep half, trying to sweep here. This is a guy who, you know, a little over two days ago thought he was gonna just be a fan of this monumental event. He's trying to hang in. For the fans, for his country. And John McCarthy stands him up. Anderson is exhausted. It took him a while to stand up at the end of round one. Check. Anderson cannot let himself be taken down again. And don't forget, Daniel Cormier's striking has improved exponentially over the years. Good knee by Anderson. Cormier ducks out of danger. Anderson with the left. Cormier misses. Here we go. Good kick to the body by Anderson. Careful what game you play with the spider. Knowing Daniel Cormier as we do, Joe, I think there's a part of him that wants to show the world, I'll strike with Anderson Silva for a little while here. Well, I could certainly see him wanting to test his skills, but yep. that is the most dangerous exactly. game. Exactly, exactly. Playing with fire for sure. Let's 
Let's focus on getting that three-quarter guard and all the way through. It's perfect. Throw the cross and the knee. In the front. Just move a little bit more. You're going to make history tonight. It's a tough fight, but let's go. He's got nothing. UFC 200. Tate versus Nunes. Sponsored by Bud Light. Raise one. So right now. Sold out. T-Mobile Arena. Third and final round. For Anderson Silva. It's time. Beautiful technique by Anderson. He's gone to that a few times. The kick with the right and leaping in the air and kicking with the left. Again, this is a dangerous game for Daniel Cormier. Oh, good right hand by Cormier. Anderson, Anderson looking for that elbow. Me. DC again takes him down. Not only did Anderson take this fight on $48 notice, Cormier was training for a five-round fight. And he's had top position. And really, no back and forth clinch game to try to exhaust his gas tank. Anderson keeps going to that lockdown on the right leg of Daniel Cormier, and it's made ground and pound much more difficult for Cormier. It's been good for him defensively, but not offensively. And Daniel's just kind of squashing his head here, keeping the weight on him, cutting off his breathing. But if the crowd keeps booing, Big John might stand him up. And wrestlers know how to make heavy even heavier. And Daniel Cormier is great at smothering his opponents. Yeah, his top game is excellent. They keep adding up for Daniel Cormier. Nearly 130 total strikes. To the body. DC trying to stay busy. Well, if Anderson could just control his posture and grab a hold of him, like right there, it's very possible that Big John would stand him up. He keeps saying, let's go, move it. I mean, all Anderson has to do is hang on here. Big John is right there up. watching closely. The audience is chanting, stand, stand up. up. <laughs> Cormier throwing down consistent strikes now. Two minutes on the clock. Two minutes, now less than two, remain in this fight. Does the spider have some magic left? Is there a kick up the middle coming, like against Vitor Belfort? Or a knee? Under 90 seconds now. Anderson is looking for that one opening. One minute remains. Anderson's looking for that opening, but he's got to take some chances. I mean, he is clearly looking for one big shot yeah. here. 
might be the kick up the middle. We've seen it before. Chasing down Cormier. Swing and a miss by DC. Good kick to the body. He hurt 30 him seconds. That. Daniels hurt. Swarming him. Knee by Silva. 20 seconds. They go the distance. Two days notice for the greatest of all time. And that man is a real fighter. Both men should be applauded. Daniel Cormier says, I'll fight anybody, even though I was supposed to be the main event. Fight replay brought to you by Bud Light. Raise Wanda right now. There we see a takedown attempt completed by Daniel Cormier. Here's some ground and pound by Cormier. Pretty good job defensively by Anderson of avoiding really big shots. There's Silva trying to open up with some shots, but he gets taken down again. Really his best success was in the third. That front kick to the body. See it right there. DC tried not to react to it, but that hurt him. Cormier and Silva. Nothing but respect. Time for our official decision. Brought to you by Metro PCS. And for a piece of UFC 200 history, follow at Metro PCS and retweet to win. Authentic items straight from tonight's fights. Official rules at MetroPCS.com slash UFC. Here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score this contest 30-26. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Daniel D.C. Poirier. I'm here with the winner, Daniel Cormier. First of all, D.C., congratulations. This is a very difficult fight for you to take on such short notice. Give us your thoughts on the fight and how it went down. The fight went how it had to go. Joe, I've been training for a specific guy for eight weeks. The guy gets out of the competition. I fight Anderson Silva. I was a little nervous. He's so good. And I mean, I, I did what I had to do. You know, it's very difficult to switch opponents two days, but Anderson did a good job of staying in there. Was there anything surprising about fighting him? He did a very good job of locking down my leg on my back. It was hard for me to advance the position, but that goes to show you, man, this guy's the greatest fighter we've ever seen in the octagon. I can't complain. I did what I had to do. How difficult was this for you psychologically to take this on short notice, and where was your mind when you found out that John Jones fell out of the competition? I was, I was sad. I've worked hard to fight Jones. I tried to erase that loss, but coming, I, most guys would not take this fight. They wouldn't do it, but I felt I needed to. Mentally, it was draining. Everything was tough. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you again. Daniel Cormier, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Anderson Silva, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, Anderson. Enjoy that, sir, because you've deserved it. What was it like? taking this fight with such a great fighter like Daniel Cormier on such short notice. Como é que foi aceitar essa luta com um grande lutador como ele em tão tão pouco tempo? Ah, então, é, para mim foi um grande desafio pessoal aceitar essa luta, porque eu consegui colocar em prática 
o que eu desenvolvi durante todos esses anos e se bem que eu tô há muito tempo sem treinar, desde a minha cirurgia eu não treinei absolutamente nada, mas valeu o desafio pessoal para mim, espero que isso sirva de exemplo para todos os brasileiros e para todos que estão aqui hoje, vocês podem tudo que vocês quiserem, desde que vocês tenham bem no coração, é isso. This fight was a big personal challenge for me to be able to accept it and to be able to come in here and put it to practice everything that I've done throughout the years. You know, this is a proof that you can do anything that you want to, anything you put your mindset to. Anderson, it's very difficult to fight a guy as big as Daniel Cormier. You're used to fighting at middleweight. Give us your thoughts on how the fight went down and was there anything surprising about it? É difícil lutar contra o cara que é mais pesado, você está acostumado com peso médio. O que você achou da luta? Eu estou acostumado a treinar com os caras muito pesados, né? O uh, meu mestre, o Minotauro. Obrigado, mestre. O Rogério Minotauro, Rafael Feijão, Jacaré. O próximo campeão aqui, galera, o Jacaré. Não esqueçam disso. E é isso. Eu estou acostumado a treinar, estou acostumado com esse tipo de, de pressão, com o cara mais pesado. Eu senti um pouco que eu estou sem treinar, sem absolutamente nada, sem treinar meu sem nada. Mas... Foi bom, o teste foi bom, acho que toda a minha equipe, é, durante toda a minha trajetória até aqui, todos estão de parabéns. Dedico essa, essa vitória a todos eles, porque para mim foi uma vitória poder colocar em prática tudo que eu treinei. E é isso, o Daniel é o campeão, é, eu vim aqui para lutar com ele, mas não desrespeitá-lo, mas sim para me colocar a teste, colocar a prova, tudo que eu sei, tudo que eu aprendi dentro da arte marcial. Try your best to remember all that. I'm used to training with heavier guys, my master Minotauro, Rogério Minotauro, Rafael Feijal, Jacare, who's the next champion here. So I'm used to this, I'm used to the pressure. This was a great test and I have to put this fight as for my teammates, everyone that's always been helping me. I really wasn't able to tr uh, train my best for this. I haven't been really training since the surgery, but it was a good test. Thank you, Anderson, and thank you for taking this fight on short notice. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for everything. Thank you. This is great time for me. I respect you, people. Thank you. Edison Selva, ladies and gentlemen. Mid-May, he had his gallbladder removed. Two days.